I'm Chelsea Holloway and welcome to Naval Horizons. I'm the Navic Atlantic audiovisual specialist and a co-host for the Technically Speaking podcast. Today I'm here with Angelica Cortez. Welcome. And you are a chemical engineer with Nav Air. Can you kind of tell us your educational background and how you got to work for the Department of the Navy? Yes, thank you for hosting me this morning. Um, yes, it's nice to meet you, um, Angelica Cortez. And as you mentioned, I am a chemical engineer for Navair and NOC AD. And uh, I've been here for approximately five and a half years. Um, I have had experiences in multiple fields as part of my job here, but currently what I am focusing on is uh, wargaming. Fun, fun. So how did you get where you are today? What was your process through your career, through your education to get you with the Department of the Navy? So I started up with my chemical engineering degree from the University of Puerto Rico at Mayagüez. Um, then I decided to pursue a master's degree in educational research and evaluation from the University of Puerto Rico at Rio Piedras. And with that, I started um, loving and gaining a lot of experience in doing experiments that involve human subjects and gathering data from various participants, how to make questionnaires and different inventories and pursuing research uh, as a way of getting knowledge about any problem of interest. And then that passion has taken me now to start pursuing a PhD in data science. And uh, yeah, I had a, a lot of experience in the education field in Puerto Rico too, but then things changed a little bit after we were hit by Hurricane Maria. Oh, wow. So yeah, I started considering uh, moving inland and starting to pursue engineering again. And I found out about this info sessions from the United States Navy at Puerto Rico. And um, I went and attended and gained information about the positions here. And I also uh, was able to gain more information from a prior colleague of mine that came to work at, at Pax River too. So Hurricane Maria really influenced you to kind of make a shift in your life, your career. Can you kind of give us a little bit more about why that was? Yes, that definitely it did. Um, I started realizing that I wanted to grow, get more growth in my career, and uh, that I wanted to get an opportunity that will get me working into multiple projects and with more diversity and room to grow. And this this seemed like the perfect opportunity for it. And I'm, I'm glad I, I was right. <laughs> was that because the experience was just kind of scary and life changing? Yes, yeah. correct. <laughs> so for us who do not know what chemical engineering is, can you kind of give us a little background about what you do? Yes, of course. Uh, so part of the background in chemical engineering involves taking several processes that deal with chemistry, but taking them to a greater scale. Like, for example, I'm not just producing uh, or making a product or a pharmaceutical solution in a, a small scale, but I'm figuring out how to take that into a greater scale. And then all the processes that are involved in that, ranging from reactor design, how you're going to design the pipes and make sure that the fluid dynamics are taken into consideration, heat transfer processes. So it's, it's the same as in the lab scale, but now figuring out how to take it to, to well, a greater how's... range. How is that affecting and how is that important to the Navy and the Marine Corps right now with the mission? Oh, it's definitely very important uh, because there are many solutions that we need that need to take chemistry into account. For example, battery design for different systems like sonobuoys, for example. And that was one of the first lines of work that I did when I came on board with Same. assisting with SBIR processes in battery design for sauna buoys. Sauna buoys? What, like just buoys that are emitting, like, tell me what that is. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Like they emit sound and that is an active way to help us track submarines, for example, or other systems. And you don't even think that we need a chemical engineer to make sure the batteries 
are correctly in a technology like that. So we cover all aspects of our technology. Yeah. We need all this expertise to make sure it works flawlessly. So, wow, that's eye-opening to know that we have <laughs> everyone working on every single piece, including batteries. So um, kind of tell us about some of this cutting edge technology that you might be working on and um, how it's solving military challenges. Of course. Um, so one of, of the things I discovered as I onboarded is that as part of the developmental program, you get to do rotations too and explore other technical areas. And I saw this project that had to do with wargaming. And I'm like, that sounds very interesting. And it had some of the requirements and programs that I used in my master's degree. And I'm like, I want to go investigate that and I was able to get a rotation with that group. Um, the funding for that project came from the NICE Section 219 fund stream and it was related to doing wargaming in a computer application to get to start looking into how people communicate and how the information flows and after that I decided to switch to that project and for about three years now, I've been focusing on wargaming initiatives and then taking that experimental experimental side to, to dealing with participants and, and gathering more data from people. So wargaming, what, what is that? Because I think of people just kind of playing a game online of different scenarios that kind of will help predict how our military may react. Is that actually what it is? Or tell us a little bit more about what that is. Of course, yeah, that's a part of it. Um, so Wargaming is a way in which we can have a specific setup of friendly and enemy forces, and we can simulate a certain situation or certain conflict or combat situations. And there are multiple ways in which we can do the simulations. It, it can be a tabletop event, something similar to Dungeons and Dragons, <laughs> or it can also be computerized <laughs> yeah, with a software or an application. So your background with chemical engineering, and now you're um, getting into wargaming with data and analytics. How are those combined? Like, how is your knowledge of like fluids and chemicals and batteries helping you with this data analytical process in wargaming? Of course. Um, so everything requires data. Everything requires information. The same thing happens in a chemical process. You are always receiving information from your sensors and gaining knowledge about what's going on with your system. How's your temperature doing? How's your pressure doing? Uh, am I getting the right products? Um, am I testing the product that comes at the end and checking that the combination is right, that the composition is right? Um, the same thing happens with the portion of educational research. Um, I want to evaluate if the programs I'm doing are being efficient, if they're helping people. And the same thing happens with wargaming. You have your human subjects, you're interacting in a specific setting that you designed from them, and then you're getting information from that interaction. So it's kind of safe to say that here with Navair, you're able to kind of flex multiple skills that you might have. You, you can uh, dive into some chemical engineering in the sense of working with the batteries and such. And then you can also get into the data analytical field and apply your knowledge of uh, a vast knowledge of different areas to kind of help. Is that safe to say that you've been able to do that? Yes, it's been a lot of, of different projects that I can get involved into and to put into practice different skills and grow both in your career and on your personal life too. Wonderful. So it's really interesting to hear about how data, you need data for everything. That's a big push lately. And um, that's uh, involved in so many different career fields, including science and technology. But even from a communication standpoint, we mm -hmm. are trying to collect data. But when it comes to chemical engineering and what you're working on with the Navy now, where do you see the future of this technology going in the next 15 to 20 years? So I see many changes that, that are happening with the wargaming concept. For example, 
us as the Navy, we are not the only branch of the military that is leveraging wargaming events. The Marine Corps, uh, the Army, the Air Force, they're also utilizing wargaming as a way, a, a method to explore different concepts. And it, it can be very insightful to start leveraging the creativity of this process, exploring how people think, the cognitive process of decisions, and also novel tactics and the creativity of, of it. And this, uh, this topic, it's going to help us in, in the future by continuing to explore the human and machine teaming interaction. And I see it incorporating different levels of automation and even artificial intelligence components and taking the human perspective into that equation is very important. I was going to bring that up, artificial intelligence. You know, it's it's a huge topic right now. I mean, it's been around, but it's really coming to light, especially mm -hmm. in the mainstream uh, uh, market. So it's something that is reshaping our technology. And I'm glad you mentioned the manufacturer human. I'm, I'm going to say this wrong, but the the pairing between human and technology, and because that's all connected within the technology that the Navy is working on. So if you could predict like maybe what you foresee in the future of how all of that might help, what would it look like hypothetically? Mm, so I see it uh, in a, a powerful combination where the human subject and the human decision makers have specific strengths in the human mind. But the computers are also very important because they also have their own strengths that we can leverage and combine with humans to be more effective in what we need to do. Like, for example, the human might be better at discriminating certain things in the environment as they go through these tactical scenarios, but then computers might be able to help with a calculation that needs to be made much faster. So then we can combine the strengths and cover each other's weaknesses too to produce a more effective solution. So Angelica, can you tell us about any exciting projects you might be working on right now or experiences you've been having? Definitely. So currently I work in a laboratory and in that laboratory we have a wargaming software. So like I mentioned, wargaming can be done either with an application or software or even a tabletop exercise. So right now we are using a specific software and in that software, we design different scenarios related to tactical situations and combat simulations. And then what we do is that we bring other people from Navier participants to go through these different scenarios. And then as they go through them, we give them multiple questionnaires and we get information about, well, how they're perceiving the situation, like are they stressed? How's their cognitive load levels going? And we can also evaluate other systems as part of this wargaming exercises. Like for example, if I have a decision support um, assisting with their decision making, I, I can gather data on how that's helping them or hindering them. And it, it's very interesting to, to be able to bring people together and be data driven with what we do. Personally, why is gathering that data so exciting for you? It is because uh, you can start exploring people's biases. You can also start exploring their creativity. Sometimes you see a decision that you didn't expect that would be made. And it's, it's very interesting to see how they develop that process. And uh, the same thing with their thoughts in general, it helps us build better system and to evaluate the systems. That's, that's interesting. So you're using science to basically predict mm -hmm. or human behavior, either predict it or learn about it so that you can kind of create technology to either move forward with human behavior or shape human behavior in a way. Is that right? Or am I getting yeah. out of the box here? Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool. Now, I know um, some data analytics and some of the products you're working on include algorithms, and that's also um, a large 
a lot of people have heard about algorithms specifically with social media and stuff like that, but how are algorithms used in your line of work and how is it helpful? Oh, they're definitely widely used. I would also recommend high school and college students to look into coding and into building different algorithms and specifically look into Python, for example, for data science or C++, uh, even MATLAB. Um, just these solutions are highly used for not just the data analysis process, but to build these different programs that we use. For example, the scenarios in the software, they're built um, by our team with different coding streams. And it's very important and it's widely utilized. And also when we bring computer solutions for human machine teaming, those are also algorithms that we're bringing in. So even though you, you know, focused in chemical engineering and you've kind of spread your wings and are in a lot of different areas, an algorithm and data analytics is still ingrained in a skill set you need, basically, possibly no matter what science and technology and drain and math uh, career field you go into. I agree. I completely agree with that statement. No matter what, you're always going to need a piece of information or a piece of data to help with your decision making, no matter the field. Great. So is there anything else you would like to kind of talk about or share any experiences you've had in the past with your work that you you would like to share to the next generation? Of course, I would highly encourage to take all the opportunities that you can if you can go into different internships and start getting hands-on experiences on the subjects that you love. That is very necessary to build your career later on. Also be a self-starter and a self learner. Um, usually I go into this online websites and platforms like Udemy or LinkedIn learning, and it helps to continue building your skill set. I would highly encourage that you pursue that in your own free time. And, and just keep moving forward and take advantage of every opportunity that you can. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us today. We learned a lot. We've been inspired by your journey and uh, we appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.